Praise the Lord. The hallelujahs in the wheelchair. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's great to be in King's Assembly. I'm excited. I'm super excited because I was here on the dedication of this building and it looks like a miracle. Now it looks like a wonder. Praise God. <laughs> then it looked like a miracle. Now it looks like a wonder. Praise the Lord. I, I came into the atmosphere I'm like, oh wow, this looks so good and looks so good and looks so good and looks so good and looks so good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, before we have our seats, I want us to really appreciate Pastor Yemisi and Pastor Chris. I want us to, I want us to really, really appreciate them. One of the few friends I have in ministry that my wife loves personally is Pastor Chris and his wife. And I keep saying that, you don't even know so much about them. He said, oh. He said, and you know, she will speak as if they spent all these years together. But because they are so lovely, when you spend time with them, you feel it. You know, um, Pastor Chris has a lot of experience because he's done it for such a long time. But it has made his heart better, not worse. And you will only know if you know that about him. You know, praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and appreciate the talk and again. Please, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we really thank you because you're good and kind. We'll thank you for your faithfulness. We'll thank you because at this time we're gathered together to be taught your word. I thank you because as the word of God is taught, illumination will come. People will come to a deeper place in Christ Jesus. We ask that wisdom would address the issues in the heart of the people. We ask that there will be grace for performance. We ask that there will be, be transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit. We give you praise and glory because all this is done already. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Please we may have our seats. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You will need to give me more energy than, you know, I, I know Pastor Chris is quite gentle, and, but you need to encourage me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I have some next levelers here, then they need to really... Oh, next levelers are here already. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you don't know what next... I, I, I got the word recently from someone that attended the next level from the UK. He said, um, we have a conference in the UK next month. And he said, uh, we're next levelers because we have this prayer meeting called Next Level. We're next levelers in the UK. So I said, oh, wow, that's a good word. Next levelers. So that's why I used it. I never knew that some people are using it already and they responded praise the lord all right um i also came with a lot of our ministers uh uh because only pastor chris could convince me to hold next level from here tomorrow morning <laughs> so pastor chris was the only one you know praise the lord hallelujah so since i don't always do it alone i was able to come with some of our ministers that left all of the work you know uh, what they call it um uh, what they call it Deputy Senior Executive Officer right there of his company. Chisum, the CEO of, what's your property company name again? Buckley Copley. They all left all they do, to do to come here and just assist me and Joshua and Ben. And of course, our pastor of our Ibadan work that did outstandingly well is also a pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm not sure about the timer, but um, it's a great thing not to give time to me, you know. But I think I can see something. I hope it is the timer because it's kind of, you know, I, I think I can see it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you all for coming. All right. So this evening, I will be speaking about how to stay on the cutting edge. Pastor, it's nice to see you. You know, how to stay on the cutting edge. How to stay on the cutting edge. And um, towards the end of my time, we will spend time to pray and um, just pray prophetically about the people. And the reason was that as I was praying in the hotel, when I got to Benin, one of the things I saw in the spirit was that I should just spend time to pray for two categories of people. Um, people, I'm going to pray about a lot about businesses. And you're going to see, in the business area, you're going to see two things. People that have been owed money. 
government is owing you, there's a pending payment, there's a pending approval, and it's going to be released. But not just that, also, I see that there's going to be that translation. People that are doing 20 million per annum will move to 100 million per annum. People that are doing 100 will move to 250. And it's just going to be wonderful. So I'm asking you so that you can open up your mind. So that's one type of the ministry that we're also going to also pray for the sake, which will involve um, a lot of people here that have tumors and lumps. You're going to find out by the time you get home tonight, the tumors, the lumps will have instantly disappeared. You know, you don't even have to say amen to that. I'm just telling you literally what the Lord has destined to do. You don't need to have to say amen to that. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes... Um, when the Lord uses in an area, and it's a pattern, you know. If, if, I, if I see my wife angry, I know she's angry. She doesn't have to say anything. There's a pattern of my wife's anger. I know that she's happy, angry. If my wife is happy, there's a pattern of her happiness. I know she's going to be happy. So I've seen the pattern of what the Lord will do today. So I'm personally looking forward to it. Praise the Lord. And there's nobody as faithful as our God. Amen? One of the biggest revelations you must have as a Christian is this, that God is good and kind. I'm telling you, it's one of the biggest, I don't know the background you come from, but the more you think that God is your problem, you will not have answer prayers. If you think God is your problem, getting answer prayers will be very difficult for you. Because how can you pray to the person that is against you? It's a funny concept. And that's why in the Bible, when a man came to Jesus Christ and says, if you are willing, you will heal my son. What did Jesus Christ tell the man? He says, if you believe, if you believe what? If you believe in my willingness to heal your son, your son will be healed. Because the man pushed it to Jesus and said, if you're willing. And he said, <laughs> no, if you believe that I am willing, your son will be healed. Glory to God. So, so it's, it's a very powerful thing. And, and most of the time, people, someone was asking me, I mean, I was, um, I was talking with Pastor George because we're together, and there's this lady that's been trying to have a baby, and we helped her, and she has a baby now. She's pregnant now, six months. And he was saying that, so how do you get to do that? What do you do with their faith? And I said, it's not really what you do to their faith most of the time. It's disclosing the things that disturbs their faith. Yeah. Because it's a lot of wrong thinking, wrong believing that makes their faith ineffective. And it shows in our prayer. God, why are you doing this to me? You see the prayer. Glory to God. John chapter 15 in verse 1. If you can give me so, just more some sound on the monitors, I'll be very grateful. John chapter 15 in verse 1. And we're talking about how to stay on the cutting edge. Let me explain what the cutting edge is before I read. Uh, um, Pastor, you want to give me your phone again? Yeah, give me, give me the phone. Um, wh who has an old iPhone? You can also give it to me. I'm going to borrow a lot of things from you today borrow, and return them back. You know, who has an old iPhone, like maybe the five years edition ago? No, it's good. You don't know if I want to give you another one in replacement, you know? Someone has that kind of phone here? Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, my darling. Praise the Lord. Th thank you. What year is this one? You don't know. This is like really old. Eh? I can tell. This, <laughs> it, it, this one even has, you know, this one that has no camera at all. This is like really old. This is, this is, this is recent, actually. This is recent. This is 12. This is 12. So this is, anyone has someone in between? Just one that has one camera? You have one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring. Then, which the usher that will help me? Is Dr. John here? Is, is he available? I just need an usher to help me pick it up. This one does not use apps, right? This one, it does use apps. Oh, wow, that's great. Praise God. I never knew, you know. Yes, I, I can have someone help me, you know. You, you can bring it. I, you're, not, you're usher, right? Yeah, you can come. So this is a very old iPhone here. I just need you to hold them. Maybe someone else on the choir, just hold each of them. You can hold them like this. You can hold them like this. Then I use a new iPhone, iPhone 14, you know. There's no iPhone 14 yet, right? So just hold them. Just hold as much as you can. So watch this now. Praise God. So watch this now. I want to watch some about the iPhone. Is this an iPhone? No, what? Is this an iPhone? Is this an iPhone? 
let's just agree, just for the sake of illustration. This is, um, what iPhone is the new one? 13. So this is iPhone 13, this is iPhone 12, this is iPhone 11, this is 10, and this is 9. Right? They just, for just illustration's sake. This is iPhone 9. Is this iPhone? 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 Which is the least effective? Nine. Which is the most effective? Thirteen. What changed in the process? It was just reinvented. That's all. So, when we speak about staying on the cutting edge, we're not saying that do something else. We say become the best you can be. That's what it is. So, this is you in iPhone 9 model. But that's not the end of you. You can become iPhone 10. But that's not the end of you. You can become iPhone 11. But that's not the end of you. You can become iPhone 12. But that's not the end of you. You can become iPhone 13. And that's not the end of you. It's from glory to glory. And from glory to glory. And from glory to glory. And from glory to glory. The challenge, this is all says, why do I, and this is the challenge, why do I need to go from here to here? Because there are functions this can never do, that this can do. There's so much you can do if you can reinvent yourself, that you cannot believe you can until you step out upon the water. Nobody, I never thought when I was younger that a phone could do a selfie. You know how we used to take pictures those days? And say, please wait. Take pictures for us because that's how we because we never thought we could just turn the phone backwards and take a picture. The best we used to is to use a stick, you know. We would just, you know, in fact, I don't know if you did, it was so bad. It was so bad that people would use the back camera and just hope if I turn it towards myself. Did you try that before? Oh, wow! You just turn the back, back and sometimes your head will be off, sometimes your face is off, and you just after some time you get to master it. Glory to God. So the question is, is this a question in, the, in this conference? Are you going to be satisfied by being this when you have the potential to become this? What version of yourself are you? Have you been stuck at? Are you stuck in you? Version 40 years old. Are you stuck in you? Version 42 years old. Are you stuck in you? Version 44 years old. Are you stuck in you, version 45 years old? Are you stuck in you, version 50 years old? And God is saying, whatever version you are, I have a model I can make out of you. This is going to be good tonight. What do you believe? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Pastor Nath, it's always love to see you where you wear white. I know the Spirit of God is with me. Praise God. John chapter 15 verse 1. So we're talking about how the Spirit of God helps us to stay on the cutting edge. How the Spirit of God helps us to stay on the cutting edge. Chapter 15 verse 1. Jesus Christ said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. And he begins to talk about himself and the father and begin to describe the concept of this new family in Christ, of the new creation. He said, every branch that is in me that beareth not fruit. Take note of what he said. Every branch that is in me that bread not food, it taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, it purgeth it, that it may bring forth much fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So the first thing I want you to see is that Jesus Christ says it this way, that you are destined to bring forth fruit. It's not, fruitfulness is not a desire, it is a design. You need to understand that. Fruitfulness is not what I desire. It's what I'm designed to be. And that's why when you are not fruitful, you cringe. Because it's not part of your spiritual DNA. It's, it's a design. Now, God begins to say something very powerful here. And watch this now. All of you that are doing very well, God begins to give us... Jesus began to explain to us the methodology of the Father... In helping us becoming more fruitful. Jesus said when someone is becoming fruitful and God wants to move him to another level. You know what God does? 
God begins to remove and purge, remove and purge, remove and purge, remove and purge, remove and purge. You know what I'm saying this? When people want to grow, they think God wants to add more. God says he's already there. You are just being distracted by the microactivity. Focus on the major activities. And that's why, let me say something to you. Some of you are wondering why some people gave up on you and walked out of your life. They didn't walk out because they left you. God helped them to take the exit so that you can come into the fullness of destiny. The Bible says the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Some things have to die for you to see the Lord. Are you hearing me? The guy broke up your heart. He didn't break up your heart. God knew you were already distracted. Listen, he knew you were distracted, so he had to make sure he took a left turn so that you can focus on destiny again. That man that used to give you contract in shed, something happened, they retired himself and finished. Because that's the problem. As long as this man is there, he becomes the crutch by which you walk. And until you look up to me, you will never say, I'm the Lord. Are you here, somebody? So what the Bible says is that when God wants to begin to build you, he said the first thing he does is to purge you. God goes into corners where nobody can touch and he begins to touch them. There becomes interruptions. There becomes shaking. There becomes interruptions. There becomes shaking. And the shakings are because the spirit of God is trying to bring out a new version of you from the inside of you. Praise God. So the Bible says it this way. In verse 2, let me say the emphasis. The Bible says, and he that brings forth fruit. Did you notice the one that does not bring forth fruit doesn't even touch or purge? It's the one that brings forth fruit. And that's why in this spiritual race you understand. As you grow higher, the demand increases. There are certain things you cannot say just because of the level of spiritual authority you function within. You just understand that. It's not something that you are taught. You, by the, by the coordination and the fellowship of the Spirit, you understand that certain spaces, certain what it's no matter the thing of sin or no sin. This is permissive, not, permi not allowed. And they say, what is in the Bible? It's not about Bible. It's the fact that there's an internal regulation in my spirit that does not allow what other people allow. So when people say that, show me the scripture for that. He said, my brother, I understand the scripture. But all things are allowed. Not all things are permissible to me. Are you hearing me today? So it says, it says that's what God does. So when we talk about growing, when we talk about staying on the cutting edge, we're talking about being the most advanced, the latest version of what God, of yourself at the level you are in. So, why is it important to stay on the cutting edge? Because staying on the cutting edge grows your capacity. An iPhone 9 is good, but it's limited in capacity compared to an iPhone 14. God is not done with you. You only have capacity issues. God, most people think God is done with them. Most of the time, God is not. The reason why is this. You don't have bigger dreams than your life than God has for you. Someone says, is that possible? I don't believe anyone has dreams bigger in his life than God has for him. And the reason why is simple. Just one scripture, Isaiah. It says, my thoughts, it says, as the heavens are higher than the earth. It says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher. He didn't say lower. He says higher. When you say 10, he says 1,000. Lower means when you say 10, he says 1. When you say 10, he says 1,000. This is a challenge with capacity. Where's that lady that was helping the lady usher? Please, can you bring the chair in front of you? I'm going to need a lot of help, I told you. Can I get two or three from the choir? This is a problem with capacity. No, no, you don't bring the chair. Just come. Just three people in the choir. So, male and female, please. Male and female, please, yeah. I need one more, one more, one more, one more. The, the brother in blue, I, I want the brother in blue. Yeah. Thank you. This is a problem with capacity. And this is why you need to be on the cutting edge. Because the cutting edge builds capacity. This is a problem. When you begin to pray, and this is your capacity, because God is good and kind, he does what you say. My brother, sit. And he feels, and this is your capacity, he's filled. 
But once we get to this stage, we still want more because that's who we are as human beings. We want deeper dimensions. We want more expressions, more manifestations. We want to advance in ministry. We want to do a lot of things. And so guess what we do? All of a sudden, we are praying that God give me more. And God is wondering, I want to give you more. So God sends these extra blessings into your life. This extra expansion as a business person, as a ministry person. So God brings them to your life. But the problem is that there's what? No capacity for them to sit. The only option, if it's possible, is for this blessing to begin to sit on this blessing. Let me get another brother. My brother, come. Because I want people to sit on each other. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise God. Stay on the other side. <laughs> yeah, stay on the other side. I want to make sure that I can see his face because he's going to be in agony soon. You know. What did you ask? What did you ask? Can he take it? Can, listen. What did you ask him? Can you take it? That is what God is asking you. Can you carry it? So guess what happens? This brother is here and initially it's funny but he will soon begin to cry after 10 minutes. Is that not true? Yes, sir. God doesn't want to mess up your life. So there are things you ask for and instead of him giving to you, the first thing he does is begins to build into you capacity. Please stand up, sir. Glory to God. Some of you, you know, I, I'm not done. You, you need to bring me two more chairs. And some of you think that, you know, some of you said, oh, look at, you know, because Christians were very funny. Once you don't understand process, you make assumption quickly. You look like a Joseph in a Potiphar's house and you say God has forgotten him. Meanwhile, Joseph was going through a capacity expansion process for the future. Joseph's gift was dreaming and interpretation. That gift in the son that could not talk a lot. But Joseph's problem was his mouth. As soon as he dreamed, he will talk. As soon as he dreamed, he will say. As soon as he dreamed, he will talk. God says, we need to fix this, you're talking. You know what God did? The first place they took him to when he left his father's house was what? Potiphar's house. One of the few things a slave loses is the right to express himself. And he took it from him. They took it from him. How do, you, how do I know that when Joseph passed the test? I'll tell you how I knew. Do you understand this? When, just, when Potiphar's wife said, he said, Joseph wanted to sleep with me. What did Joseph say in response? He said, baby, baby, the one I said before brought me here. I will not talk again. Whatever you want to do, do. God says, you have passed the test. Go ahead. Because he had passed the test of learning to keep quiet. And all through the process, this is what God was doing for Joseph. God was helping Joseph build capacity. God, and this is what happens sometimes. Because some of you say, God, I've been praying. And God says, all the time you are praying, I'm building capacity. All the time I'm praying, I'm building capacity. And, and it's building capacity because very soon it's going to bring one more blessing. And very soon it's going to be another blessing. But before it brings all that, God begins to prepare you for what he has prepared you for. Glory to God. Thank you. Let me show you a scripture quickly. In the book of First Corinthians. Mm. Because when you're saying I want to be on the cutting edge, I want to reinvent myself, at the root of the invention is growth. And when I say growth, I'm not focusing on external growth. Because external growth is the child of internal growth. When you grow, everything grows. That's why you have to go deep to go higher. That's why it's that way. Look, look at something about capacity. First Corinthians. Mm.
chapter 13. I'm trying to look for it. Why it says the spirit of the prophet is shown to the prophet. It's verse 40, but you just need to tell me to look for it. Fourteen thirty-two. Fourteen thirty-two. See what it says here. And let me let's explain this. Let's explore this spiritual concept here. And this this chapter and the few chapters were dealing with you know um, a, a, a topic on that pneumatology and talking about charisma, the gifting of the Holy Spirit. And it began to say something significant. Watch what it says now. I want to watch what it says. It said the spirits of the prophets. Is subject to the prophet. I don't know if we charismatics are taking time to delve into the fullness and the reach of the scripture. Because in a way, it's confusing. When you say the infinite is limited by finite, it's confusing. Normally, the infinite should be consumed by the finite. But now, the person of Paul brings us revelation and says... The spirit of the prophet, which is infinite, is regulated, is limited by the prophet. What does that mean? And this is what it means particularly. No matter what God wants to do in your life, your capacity will regulate how much you can do. That's what it means when it says the spirit of the prophet is what? Subject to the prophet. I will tell you what I mean. No matter the anointing that comes upon me, I cannot sing in Hebrew. The reason is not because I'm not anointed. My vessel does not have Igbo capacity. So even if prophecy come in Igbo, I cannot articulate. I'm going to shut down. Not because God is not using me, but my capacity cannot do that. The reason I'm saying so is that the capacity you release of the Spirit is not how much the Spirit has in you. It's how much you have developed. So you will notice something. You can have capacity to pastor a church of 10,000. You can have grace for a church of 10,000. But if your capacity is 200, you will stay at 200. Not because the grace is not available, but that's how much your capacity can take. You can have the capacity to do business of 1 billion naira turnover per year. But you can have grace, rather, to do business of 1 billion turnover per year. But all you will do is 1 million naira per year because that is where your capacity is. I'll give, it, I'll, give you, I'll give you a story. I don't know if you have read Bible prophecies before. If you've read Bible prophecies, it's in the book of Ezekiel. When Ezekiel began to talk about prophecy, especially prophecy eschatology, he began to talk about atomic attacks, all of those kind of things. Did you read Ezekiel? Did you notice that Ezekiel would not use words like nuclear weapons? Ezekiel wrote, I think in one of the chapters, he said he saw that towards the end of time, that before men could close their mouth, their eyes melted in front of them. The only thing that could have done that is what? Nuclear weapons. But Ezekiel did not understand nuclear weapons. He could not use the word. Because the, that, that, that knowledge was not available in their days. So you are here today right now. I mean, you are here today right now. The grace, the spirit of God upon you is to do business of one billion per annum. But guess what? You will end up doing 10 million every month, every year. Not because that's what the Spirit of God wants for you. That's the capacity that you have. He said the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. If you are, let's say that you are a music artist here and all you sing is Yoruba songs. All you sing is Yoruba songs. It's really great and anointed, but your reach will also be determined by that. The, you see, it's not, it's just, but if, because that's the capacity available. If you are a French artist here, and all you minister, you minister just in French, or you sing just French, that same thing will apply. You say, oh, why am I not going to um, anglophone countries? It's not because God doesn't want you there. Of course, there'll be, there'll be crossover effect that will always happen. But as a major voice, sometimes there will be something supernatural that will diffuse everything. I understand that. But most of the time, you will hardly see a French gospel minister 
that will run through the world because it's not because it's not anointed. Sometimes it's that capacity issue that the language is in French. The major language we're speaking is English. In the French world, you'll be shaking, but it'll just be difficult. You know what that does for us as individuals? It puts on us a personal responsibility for development to see the hand of God manifest to our life to the fullest degree. I'm telling you, and this might be what was responsible between the difference between Peter and Paul. Paul never saw Jesus Christ, yet all his books we read. Peter saw Jesus Christ, yet we have few books. Even Peter testified, the things that brother Paul have written, they are hard to understand. And the reason is simple. Peter was a fisherman. God used him that way. Paul was a lawyer. So when you read Paul's writing, some of you think what's like justification, this and this and this. Those are not religious words. They are legal terms. If you're a lawyer, they are used in the law school. Justification, redemption, God substitution. Those are legal terms. Because of the, the vastness of his mind, his contemplation of revelation was at a degree that helped him in comprehension and explanation. Praise God. This is not scripture, but observation. Observation. Have you noticed the people that have the largest church in our country are all PhD holders? <laughs> There's something about their mind that I'm going to know. I'm telling you. Have you not noticed that? I'm telling you, you, they will just find their way to get it. Yeah, thinking about it, Abby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think. Read him. Deeper. MFM. Christ Embassy. Winners. I just noticed that. Ah, what's going on here? I said, I found the path. I'm on my way. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I'm on my way. And what thing that would just, you, you would just be surprised. These things would just be there. And some of those people, I mean like, I mean like Dr. De, Dr. Bishop Deco, he did his PhD in his 50s. Reading. And that has the ability to do something to their minds. Glory to God. So we began to talk about how you can be on the cutting edge except you are growing. Except what? You are growing. So the question now is this. The question now is this. Someone says, how do I know if I'm growing? The Bible tells us how to know if you are growing. The way you know if you are growing is that your talking and your thinking will change. How do I know that? Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. He says, when I grew, I put away childish things. He says, if you're talking and you are still doing childish things, we can say, I'm growing. No, 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 no. We see it. James chapter 3 verse 2 says, any man that is mature is able to control his words. That's how I know you're growing. I mean, you are, you, you, you've done the first one billion, there's nobody that knows anything. This one that you make hundred billion and you just come to church, you want to pack the G-Wagon at the gate and it's you, like, you, uh, this guy just entered money. The people that are inside the money, even when they talk about it, they just say 20, 40, 50, 60. You, they don't know that what they are calling are dynamites. <laughs> they say, oh, will you, do you, what happened yesterday? I was expecting the 250. You even think it's 250,000 there. Meanwhile, it's 250 million dollars. Because at the level of conversation, there's only to put me on the ladder there. It's the normal. <laughs> Glory to God. When you finish praying, just come and say, Ah! Bra, 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 bra. We just finished three hours prayer. We know you don't pray. <laughs> In the school of those that pray, you are just starting. Uh, where is three hours in all what we are saying? Uh, when I just learned to, I learned to pray through some guys I used to pray. I learned to pray, you know, 19, 1994, that was when I learned to pray. There was a group of guys I used to pray, you know, I can, the first one was Peter Otoki, the second one was, I call him Bodolu. So when I joined them to pray, those guys prayed 12 hours every day. 
12 hours minimum. So this particular time, they were doing a 40 days fast. And this 40 days fast, they could only eat, this they could eat, but they cannot eat things that have pepper or salt. So when they eat rice, it cannot have salt and they cannot use steel. So they eat the rice. So basically they ate for energy, not for satisfaction. They ate just to stay alive. So when I joined for the first day of prayer, you know, weeping because I start with braggadocious. I just go, hey, shalababa. I just saw those, they, they were about 12 of them. They, when they, they just took the edge of the pill. These are holding this pill. They just, everybody just sat down on the pill at the edge, you know, and they were there. I said, ah, why are they not? <laughs> I, I didn't know that when you're praying for 12 hours, you, you have to plant the energy. <laughs> so, after the second hour, Ashama Moshkama. After the third hour, wisdom came to me, my old boy, sit down. <laughs> ah, but those guys, they were just on the chest. Spali, Pratis, Koma, Taima, Pori, Sali, Maikapa, Shkavari, Sadiwata, Kiamato, Pandeko, five hours. Maestro, Kaina, Mighty Pa, Skali. <laughs> That's how they are. Praise God. So I was talking about how little you're growing. You're talking and your thinking changes. When a child makes money, you see it. Even the things of the spirit. You can tell. You can tell. The people, the people that listen to you, the people that talk to you can tell that something has significantly changed about you because it changed in your talking. They can see the change in your thinking. You know how, we ch you, know how you change your thinking? The thing that triggers your happiness no longer trigger your happiness most times. The thing that triggers your anger no longer trigger your anger most times because your values have changed and your triggers are different. Married men know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Married men know what I'm talking about. When you were young in marriage, first two years, everything used to get you angry. But your wife hasn't really changed. Your husband hasn't really changed. He still puts his shirt by the sitting room. His shirt there, his shoes there. You just not saying, what's even wrong with you? Just bring the shoe, let me go and take it away. <laughs> but the first year of marriage, what is this? Am I your house girl? Why did you marry me? Glory to God. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So someone says, okay, growth is going to help me be on the cutting edge. Why is it important to be on the cutting edge? The Bible says the one that does not bear fruit, my father puts aside. If you don't stay on the cutting edge, you'll lose relevance. Not because God has discarded you, but you have not made yourself available for use. There are some phones that are still good and brand new, but they are not compliant for 5G, 5G internet. Not because they are not wonderful. They are not just designed that way. I, you know, surprisingly, I use a SIM card in my phone even till now. And um, I've been trying to do a 4G internet, and they keep telling me that the SIM card I have cannot do 4G. I must go back to the telecommunication company and get an upgraded SIM card. Many of you want 5G operation of the spirit, but the SIM you are carrying is 2G. And the way these things are, same in the physical, same in the spiritual, they are upgrades in the spirits. They are upgrades in the spirits. They are always upgrades in the spirits. Portals of the spirit always open up from time to time and bring about upgrades. So why am I not growing? The first reason why people are not growing is this. Because people assume that growth is automatic. That's the first assumption that, you know, they just assume that, you know, and let me tell you something. <laughs> we may age, but we are not growing. Because growth is more than adding years. The Bible helps us understand that growth is automatic. How do I know? First Peter 2.2. 2. It, said, it said, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may what? Grow thereby. So, he says, for you to grow, there must be what? Desire. The reason most people are not growing is that people are thinking, okay, once, so, this is a businessman. If I start this business, it will grow. Growth is not automatic. It can crash. Even spiritually, you will not grow. Growth is not automatic. You have to be very intentional about your growth. People that know how to pray, learn to pray, sir. And people that learn to pray, that pray effectively, learn to pray in two ways. There are two ways to pray. The two, if your prayer is going to have answers. Prayer is learned by example. Someone must show you. 
disciples of Jesus Christ told Jesus Christ, he said, teach us to pray. They, they came, they say, sir, we pray and you pray. And we see this, teach us to pray. Then another thing, prayer must be thought by teaching. Because it's the teaching about effective prayers that makes prayer effective. So when you see people that know how to pray and get results by prayer, there is a teaching that they go through and there is an example. Why am I saying this? Intentional. You are doing business. Where did you learn business? Mm. I just started from somewhere. See, there are people that would start like that and explode, but they're in the very small minority. Because you just think that, and when you're young, you think energy is everything. When you grow older, you understand the place of wisdom over energy. Praise God. You know, <laughs> one of, let me just not go there. So we assume, so why people are not growing? They assume. The second thing is this, why people are not growing? People avoid growth, growth pains. And the truth is this. This is the truth about life. True growth happens outside comfort zones. True growth happens outside what? Comfort zones. I don't know how much history of this church you knew. But there was a time that a certain land was bought. And there were issues on the land. And while that was going on, Pastor Chris could have just said, you know what, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. But Pastor Chris kept pushing. Do you know how painful it is when you buy a property and it's all just stuck? You are not going forward. You are not going backward. Your money is there. And this is large sum of money. And you have to start from somewhere else. People don't want to, because growth has pains. See what the Bible says, James chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And the challenge with growth pains is this. This is a challenge with growth pains. Let me explain to you. Most people are trying to avoid growth pains, thereby avoiding the lessons of growth. Sometimes, God, God, God treats us, life is like video game. The last video game I played that I succeeded was Mario. <laughs> I've never found any other one more interesting. But Mario in stage two, you know, Mario is the one that is the small ball, and you hit tap, 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 you hit. Then you have something that comes up from the mouth to devour all these animals that come. That's the last video game I played. Yeah. Because sometimes when people look at me, they think I'm very contemporary, but I'm just like, <laughs> people help me look good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But watch this now. So when I was learning Mario, in, I, I used to make a mistake because in stage two or three, you had to pick up a weapon. But the need for that weapon was not in that stage. It was at a later stage. Who knows that game? That's good. Oh, thank you, my brother. But I was always in a hurry. I didn't see the use to go and pick a weapon I'll no use. So when I get to stage five and my brother or cousin is playing the game and is eating up with the bombs, those animals, I don't have anything to heat them up with. So they just destroy the guy that is playing. Then I learned some of our life. Sometimes God takes you through a path, not because it's your path for you to pick up lessons and weapons for the future. You go through this mean boss and you wonder why am I here? Not because of you, because of the future. I'm telling you, you go through, the, you go through this. But the thing is that most of us, by the time the path becomes difficult, we begin to run away from the lesson. You don't understand. And that lesson is a weapon for your future. So what happens is that you get to the future without the weapons to confront the future. Look at what the Bible says. James chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. It was on the screen some minutes ago. James chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. What's the next thing? Keep going, sir. And what? Let, let's do it together. I want to go. He says, when patient is working with you, allow it. He says, don't boycott the work of the Spirit in your life. How many of you have? I'm telling you. 
Because there are a lot of people that have jumped the process of the Spirit in their life. And what you don't know is that that lesson that you missed will be tested in the future. Because tests will always come. Praise God. You will hear things like, ah, thank you for what happened then. It prepared me for now. But when you, when you did copy, copy that time, you, you started to roll away from the test that time. When now happens, how do you deal with it? Glory to God. I said glory to God. Thank God for people that hurt me. Thank God for mistakes that I made. I made terrible mistakes as a young pastor. But I learned. Because it was God that was teaching me through my darkness. Didn't you read the Bible, Psalm 23? Have you seen it before? The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What's the next line? He makes me what? Light that in green pastures. Did you notice? I want to follow the progression. He makes, he leads me inside what? The still water. He restores my soul. Then he says what? Next verse. He leads in the path of righteousness for his what? Namesake. The next verse is what? Though. Did you notice? Did you just notice that? Every time the Lord was leading me, I didn't get into trouble. Oh my God. The only time he went to the valley of the shadow of death was do ye. I. I. When the Lord was my shepherd, I had no want. When he let me to see water, I was okay. But in verse 4, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. How did I get there? It was not even him that led me there. I took my leg there. But the good thing about God is this. God knows how to convert disasters into lessons. So someone says, I messed it up. God says, I'm a master designer. Your mess has been factored into the plan. It's like a GPS system. When you miss the way, it says recalculating. It says recalculating. You are still getting there. Recalculating. I know you missed it in marriage. Recalculating. I know you lost money. Recalculating. I know you lost a job. Recalculating. But you are still getting there. Glory to God. But the key thing is to let God walk within you. You can't struggle with God and win. Ask Jacob. What is the Lord trying to take away from you that you're holding on to? Is it the way you talk? Is it the way you treat people? Is it the way you honor people? Is it the way you pay back your loans? Is it the way you ask for money? Is it documentation? Is it the way you respect people? Is it the way you pay your staff? Is it the way you honor your parents? Is it, does it have to do with your giving? Has God dealt with you about kindness before? Have God dealt with you about being in a state of joy even when things are not okay? Have God dealt with you about murmuring before and you're still holding it back? And, someone, and God says, don't you understand? When I want to grow you, I begin to purge you. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Some of you, the simple next step for growth is just to pay your staff well. Says the Holy Spirit. That's just a simple next step of growth. Because when the people are happy, the king is blessed. See, big doors roll on small hinges. The thing that will bring the biggest change in your life are small things than you do. Thank you. Please. I'm so grateful. Let's begin to wrap up tonight. Because my concern is this. How long will you stay in your way of not growing? Let me tell you something. You have legitimate reason why you have not been growing. Why you have not been doing what you should do. But think of you when you are 60. What will you tell yourself? That, you know what? I was so angry. My background was the reason I didn't do this. And you have a total life of regret. I made up my mind that as the Lord leaves, as he helps me, because I know that it's going to be tough and challenging. I don't want to be 60 years old and regret. I want to look back and say I tried. 
Some of you, you know what God needs to take away from you? Just the fear of big things. When is a five million contract? You are there. When is ten million? You are there. But the moment they say two hundred and fifty, the fear that grips your soul, and God says, "You cannot enter Canaan land with this kind of mentality. Stay in the wilderness." Praise God. I said, "Praise God." I said, "Praise God." Don't avoid good pains. Embrace them. So let's close with this. How does God grow us? How does God grow us? I really ran out of my... How does God grow us? The first way God grows us is... So if you want to grow, how does God grow us? Do you have it right now, sir? Where is it? Yeah, bring it for me. Who likes cake in the choir? Come, come, come. If you like it, come. Open it, sir. How does God grow us? Yeah. Oh, wow. This is going to take us a while. I thought they were going to turn it loose. Yeah. Break it loose. Break every chain. I'm, I'm sorry there's no, like, knife or something, but this King's Assembly got me this cake, and King's Assembly was the exceptional thing. Just to take a bite and tell me how it feels. Just a bite. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. You know, when God wants to grow, you know what he does? He brings the next level to you. And boy, that's not where you are. He makes you have a bite. So that you can taste what it can be. And when you taste it, it says, come and get it. He 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 says, come and get it. And he, he doesn't not play with you. He actually comes. And when you come, he gives it to you. It's yours, my sister. <laughs> Should I show you what that means? This is what God does. You are doing business. The biggest you've got is 20 million. But the next level for you is 50 million. And out of nowhere, without your effort, you will just get one business, 50 million. Bam! You will test it. But you notice when you get that business, you go back to 20. You know what I'm talking about? You just go back to a different position. The reason why is that you're not at that level. God just gave you a moment of catch-up to see what it can be so that it can walk towards it. And I understand this. When I said praying for the sick, I, I, when I said praying for the sick, the first time I saw a deaf ear, deaf ear open was about 15 years ago. No, about, maybe about 20 years ago. Hey! I said, Farabha Shandaya. But I knew I was not there. So it makes, you know, when you taste it, it tells you that it's possible. That's what God is trying to tell you. He tells that it's possible. So when you know it's possible, you can now go for it. It's difficult to go for what you don't know is possible to you. So God gives you that taster as an encouragement. And God loves to encourage that was why when Mary said, how this, God, let me encourage you, go, go and meet Elizabeth. You don't know, go to meet Elizabeth was a miracle. The reason why is that, remember, Elizabeth was three months old that when Mary went to meet her. That many months old was Mary herself. She must have been one week from the Bible story. Without, there's no way you can see a one week old woman that is pregnant and know. She herself does not know. So that feeling she had was entirely spiritual. But that was what she needed to know she was carrying a child. That someone from the outside could testify to what she was carrying that nobody else knew. Praise God. So when God wants to grow you, God begins to expose you to things that will create appetite in you. I know how I got here. I know how I got here. I knew how I got here. There was a guy in my secondary school. His name is Lake of Ashino. He's in London right now. Some of you might know him. He was a minister. He was very prominent when he was in school. And Lake of Ashino will come and bring books by Kenny Hagin. That's how I got here. And I saw Kenny Hagin doing gunshots. You know gunshots? Kenny Hagin just goes, <laughs> and as he pointed, the whole road just collapsed. Boy! I said, Jesus! Men have this kind of power. 
Then I saw Ben He would just, you know, there's one crusade on, on YouTube, Milwaukee Ben He's crusade, where he sang, Holy, 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 how you love. And Ben He would just say, Oh, take it. And the whole ministers from front to back, everybody collapsed. I said, Jesus. And those days, the STV was not so common as it is right now. It was this big dish and quite expensive. And my neighbor had one, and I would buy VHS videotapes because TBN used to show just one Sunday, every, just on Sundays, every, what's that thing? Every week. And I would say, and it was Sundays, Benny used to come at like 6 a.m. So there's no way you could be in someone's house watching television by TV. It was irresponsible. I would buy it myself, please, just put in the tape and record it. And God used those experiences to put appetite in me. The question is this. Do you recognize the experiences God has used to put appetite in you? Or you're ignoring them? Or you have destroyed them? Because God is kind. He will make a bush burn, hoping it can get your attention. Have you seen the bush that burns? See, until Moses turned by the bush, he didn't hear the voice. Until the bush catches your attention, you will not hear the voice. How does God put new level in you? It makes you, it makes you thirst. You've always been okay single, but these two people in the choir just got married and they were your best friend. And one day as you were going, they just kissed in car in the car in a very special way. I just said, just said, oh my God. What? And, and all through the weekend, you could not get away from it. He said, someone would just be single in their house. Nobody to kiss. Nobody to do anything. Nobody to do... You know, as they are going, holding them, only God that knows. They just held their hands. Only God that knows what they have done right now. Maybe they are going to kiss again. And the reason why is that God is just putting something to say, it's time to get married. The danger is that you can... Oh, is it a good time to... <laughs> I, I saw that somebody wanted to say, oh, oh. Some sisters, yeah, yeah, yeah. He will hear now. Say, oh, amen. Uh, yeah. And the reason why is that God is hoping that that thing will spark something. But like every fire is, you can either kill it or nurture it. The, sec the second way, God. So when God puts the desire there, the second way God helps us grace put the desire there is through relationships. The Bible says, iron sharpness iron. And I'm going to close with this. I'm going to say two things about relationship. It says, iron sharpness iron. I'm not even going to go into the scriptures. How does God grow you through relationships? There's always an, an Elijah that can raise an Elisha. I've heard Pastor Chris talk, and he'll talk about our pastor, Reverend Sam, and speak about other people that God has used for him. There's a way Nathaniel will talk about Pastor Esco, and I'm not extremely close to him, but the few times I've heard him speak about things that are monumental in his life, he'll say, Pastor Esco. Because there's always that person that has light that can light up your light. That's the power of relationships. And you must notice there are two types of relationship. Some are doors. Some are helpers. The challenge is this. Most of us miss our helpers because we, we are looking for helpers and not doors. And no matter what a helper is. Their relationship that is a helper, once you meet this person, is what you want. That's a helper. But another relationship that is essential is called doors. What are doors? Doors are people that by themselves, they cannot help you, but they can connect you to a helper. The example of that is the girl that connected Naaman the leper to who? Elisha. She herself could not heal, but I know somebody. What you don't know is that sometimes when you pray for help, God does not send you helpers. He sends you doors. And because it's helper you are looking for, you ignore the door and keep looking for helper. And many of you have done that. You are praying for someone to love you. And they say, um, you know, and all of a sudden, you pray for someone, and this guy comes and says, please, can you help me? And this, and he said, this is not the kind of guy I want to marry. It's not the guy you are meant to marry. He's the door. He's his cousin that lives in the UK that is meant to lick you to him. But the problem is that you have destroyed the door and destroyed the helper in return. Are you here, somebody? 
Oh, oh wow. So, so, so when you come to service and say, say hi to your neighbor, you look. Pastor Preach, this is not neighbor now. <laughs> this one needs help. This is not neighbor, this one needs help. But you know why God does that? God knows that if he puts all the blessings in helper, you will use your human mind to figure it out. So to stretch out your faith, he leads you towards doors. Are you listening to me? And many of you have just walked. And this is how God grows you. The relationship that will help you, but there's a door there. Some of the most significant relationships in my life, I'll tell you something. There's a guy that attends our church, he's a billionaire. How did he attend our church? How did he know about our church? After every service in our church, I stay by the gate and I greet people. That's what I do most of the time. The sister came from the U.S. and said, there's a church in Nigeria. The pastor stays at the gate and it's a large church. He greets everybody when they're leaving. He says, you try that church. Guess what? Don't tell them who you are. I'm sure one day he will greet you, will call you and greet you. He said, me, I'm a nobody. He just called me and greeted me. And he called me during the week to find out how I was doing. And the truth is that even that sister to tomorrow, I don't remember. The day I finally met this billionaire guy, I said, hello, sir. He started laughing. I said, why are you laughing? He said, my sister told me, if I keep coming here, one day you will call me and you will get to know me. He said, well, I just finished building my office complex. We have maybe 250 staffs in oil and gas. I, I want to come and introduce you. I said, wow. But the point was, I didn't meet the helper first. It was the door I met. Thank God I didn't ignore the door. Or else, I'll have missed the helper. <laughs> and why is that important? God is going to use relationship to move you. To when you pray for money, is in people. When you pray for resources, is in people. When you pray for breakthrough, is in people. When you pray, people are God's answer to your problems. See Pastor Chris here. I don't joke with Pastor Chris here. That's the truth. I've never, outside our ministry, done next level anywhere else by our church. But Pastor Chris told me, and this is why this night is very special. I was meant to preach yesterday morning, or this, this morning, this morning, this morning. He said, the Spirit of God, I felt led by the Spirit that should come in the evening. I said, Pastor Chris, because of our relationship, how much I trust you, I didn't want to pray. You have never told me that the Spirit of God said before. I said, I will come. I called our team. It's a bundle of people that we brought to make it happen. They are coming. But the reason why he could ask me of that is not because the Lord said. How many the Lord said? It's the relationship that has been built. The trust in the prophetic what he has. And the regard I have for him that brought him there. And let me say something to you. Maybe someone will say, Pastor, you are talking about relationship. If you know what people have done to me, and this is a problem, people don't categorize their friendships. There are three kinds of relationships. There's casual, there's core, and there's what? There's committed. Casual, people that you see. Committed, people that you're involved in. Core, the people that will be there for you. The problem is that we keep spending time your best friends, you will not comment on, people that will die for you, you will not comment on their posts on Instagram. It's the people you don't know, you will comment on their posts. <laughs> you keep spending time with casual friends as though they are your core friends. When the day of reckoning now comes when you are sick, they don't even know you are there. You don't say they broke your heart. They didn't break your heart. They were never your core friends. They were casual friends. The thing is to put your friendship in three boxes and invest less with casual friends. And invest more, we committed and call. The question is that when we're talking about Dr. Bridget, Robert, Dr. Keith Johnson, that, sh that spoke earlier on, he had a heart surgery. He said, I knew where my friends were. Where are my friends? I mean, we, we lost one of our friends, and today's in memorial service. As I was coming here, my other friend was going to Uyo to go and speak. And as I said to him, I said, how is it? Because this is not for any clapping, and please don't put it on social media. Please, it's just very personal. Some of us, about five, seven of us just got together, and he said, oh, we've been able to get the money up to over 11 million to give to the family. And I think Pastor Chris is also 
part of this. It's just about five, eight of us, that kind of thing. And I told him, I said that, can we have something for the kids? Can, can each of us take one or two kids and sponsor them to university? I said, because that's what I hope someone could do for me if that happens to me. That call friend. The challenge is this. The people you spend time with on social media are they call. Who is God using to build you? Because call friends sometimes are not fun. Most times, call friends are not fun. E.g., your wife. E.g., your husband. They are not fun. The ones that are fun are like, oh! But those are the people that God used to build you. You want to grow. Have you been able to identify who God is using to build you? Let's pray.